In the simplest of terms, the S7 Edge is the best smartphone I have ever used for video creation. I call it my little ninja, and here's why. Multipod review, section links in the description, let's go. At just shy of 6 ounces and dimensions of approximately 6 by 3 by 0.3 inches, it is both a light and medium sized smartphone that will fit larger pants pockets and if that's not the case, will be easily transportable in any kind of jacket pocket. The primary camera features a 12 megapixel sensor, a wide angle lens with a fast f-stop of 1.7, optical image stabilization and a viewing angle of a 26 millimeter full frame equivalent. The Edge's video autofocus performance is nothing short of amazing, featuring Canon Zone, dual pixel autofocus. The secondary camera features a 5 megapixel sensor, an even wider lens that will give you a viewing angle of a 22 millimeter full frame equivalent, again with a fast f-stop of 1.7. The Edge features popular video modes such as UHD at 30 frames per second, QHD at again 30 frames per second, 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second, and at 720p it offers a slow motion mode that will go all the way up to 240 frames per second. Via micro SD card you can expand on the internal memory up to a stunning additional 256 gigabytes. The inbuilt 24-bit 192kHz audio will give you very good results right from the phone, but should you decide to employ a dedicated mic, the Edge also comes with great active noise cancellation. The Edge features a 3600 mAh battery that will give you approximately 5 hours of video shooting from a single charge. Quick Charge 2.0 technology will charge the Edge to 60% within 30 minutes. The Edge the Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen can display 16 million colors. It has a diameter of 5.5 inches. Its resolution is 2560 by 1440 pixels. It is also multi-touch capable and protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 4. Let's start with the bad news. There is a single test in which the video autofocus of the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge not failed but disappointed severely and that is 1080p 60. Video autofocus performance just drops. It almost reminds me of a purely contrast detect system. I mean, it just slows down significantly. If you were hoping to combine 60 smooth frames per second with Full HD resolution and stellar video autofocus performance, unfortunately, the S7 Edge can't pull it off. Maybe it's a firmware fix? I hope so. If not, it's really a bummer if you're into that 60 frames per second aesthetic. On the other hand, in any other video mode, be it 4K, QHD, Full HD 30, video autofocus performance is stellar. It's nothing short of amazing. I mean, it even beat my Canon 70D DSLR. As a vlogger, you're going to love it, because it has everything you want in a video AF system. It's silent, it's responsive, it's dead on. Now considering it's a smartphone that has a pretty small sensor, low light performance is actually pretty good. And that's because Samsung, instead of upping the megapixel count, just left it at 12 and instead chose to increase the size of the individual pixel to up its ability to gather light, which in turn gives us a better low light performance. Now of course if you're used to shooting DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, don't expect the S7 Edge to match up to those kinds of low light performances. These cameras have much larger sensors and much bigger pixels. Pixels. Pro mode will limit the ISO at around 800 and for my taste that's already too much noise. I'd not push it above 640, like 400 I can tolerate, but that's a purely individual choice. It totally depends on how you feel about the image. Also, if your videos are intended to be watched on smaller screens, like smartphones, you can get away with higher ISO settings because the downscaling will take care of a lot of the noise. On the other hand, if your videos are intended to be watched on big desktop screens, be careful with pushing the ISO because it gets nasty. At really high ISOs, for example, auto mode will push the ISO even above 800 to around uh, 1250, although 1250 is a guesstimation here because auto mode doesn't really tell you which exact setting for the ISO it uses. So the end result, in my humble opinion, is a pretty wishy-washy image. So if you intend your videos to be watched on a large screen, maybe resort to the pro mode, set shutter and focus to auto, just stick into the ISO setting and limit it to 400 to 640 or whatever you think is bearable. And be okay with a slightly darker image that in return has less digital noise. 
Now, internal audio quality is very important. There might be situations in which you either do not want or are not able to use external audio. So, in these cases, don't sweat it, because the internal audio you get from the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, it is usable depending on your circumstances. If there's not a lot of wind, not a lot of noise to distract from your own voice, it'll do a great job in picking up your voice in a clear and loud manner, both talking into the rear camera or the selfie cam. Then again, you do have the choice to hook up external audio, like dedicated directional mics like the Rode VideoMic ME here that was built especially for the use with smartphones and tablets and will definitely up the game when it comes to your audio quality. And with a wire adapter like this one from Sennheiser, a very cheap but very handy accessory, you're free to hook up a variety of other mics, like my ATR 3350 Love mic here that I've used during the whole of this video. I'm very glad to report I cannot make this phone overheat. Now consider that I'm talking about the Galaxy S7 Edge here in respects to using it as a device for video creation. Not using it for that and surfing the web all day and taking calls and doing whatever it is that you normally do with your smartphone. Having said that though, the Edge gave me just about 5 hours of video shooting from a single battery charge. I mean if you're coming from shooting DSLRs or mirrorless cameras that on average give you about 90 minutes of video, 5 hours is insanely great. So battery life, sweet downside. You cannot change the battery, factory sealed. Still, you can very easily hook up an external mobile power source to your Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge without bulking up the device too much. Samsung lens cover. This is simply a cover that allows you to mount an additional wide-angle lens and tele lens to your Galaxy S7 Edge. Rode VideoMic ME. A lot of bang at just around 60 bucks. Very easy to carry around, very simple to install and definitely upping the game when it comes to your audio. Zorro external power bank. Very small, very slim, simple, inexpensive, easy to carry around way to expand on the already stellar battery life of the Galaxy S7 Edge. And last but not least, if you're studio shooting your smartphone, you're really gonna benefit from using a wire adapter like this one from Sennheiser, because it enables you to both hook up high quality external audio to your smartphone and headphones so you can monitor the quality. A quick note on SD card expansion. The highest video bitrate the Edge offers is 70 megabits per second at the slow motion mode. Multiply this by 0.125 and you get megabytes per second. In this case, 8.75 megabytes per second. And this is the highest speed your micro SD card must be able to supply in order for you to make use of all the video modes of the Edge. And you will get that from a simple class 10 micro SD card. You don't even need the higher speed classes like UHS-1 or 3, although UHS-1 is okay as well because they already go up to 10 megabytes per sec. So if you're thinking of expanding via micro SD card and are prepared of course to use this micro SD card exclusively with the Edge, anything faster than a class 10 micro SD card will simply be a waste of your money. Now I'm not going to talk build quality here. It's a very expensive phone and it for sure feels that way. It's built beautifully and it's just a pleasure to look at. There's no two ways about it. What makes this great for vlogging though is something else. It's the fact that it's so convenient to carry this device with you. So it bears the first and most important prerequisite of a good vlogging camera and that is to have the camera with you. To be able to record video whenever you need to. On top of that, you can virtually sneak this thing in anywhere. So if you're not the kind of guy or gal that likes to carry carry around a big vlogging setup that pretty much tells everybody around you that you're shooting video, this is the way to go. So the main reason why I love the Edge is not the fact that the quality is so good that I get from it. It's not the fact that the accessories are so cool. It's the fact that I get all these things in such a low maintenance, convenient form factor. So if you like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer quickly. Should you feel like supporting the channel, definitely check out the video description. There might be some product links that are interesting for you. In any case, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time and hopefully see you in another video.